Hey, we're back. We're live. We're here on Wednesday morning. We're so happy to be here to try to connect the dots on Donald Trump. It's Trump week. We have to have a theme song. Hey, that's Tim Apicella, Cynthia Sinclair. Good morning, Jay. Let's do Good Trump morning. week. Yeah. And I, I asked you guys before, what, what does ellipsis mean, okay, in Ukrainian, the Ukrainian language? I think you have to tell everybody. It means obstruction, right? Obstruction of justice. Obstruction of justice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, and he has mixed loyalties, this guy, Vindman. Yes. What do you think about that? Mixed loyalties. They said it on Fox News a number of times, and a lot of the Republican, you know, Congress repeated it. Well, let me just quote um, Republican Senator Liz Cheney from Wyoming. Shameful. It was shameful. Shameful is right. Absolutely. It was shameful. She had a bunch of Republicans standing around her, and right. she said that. But, you know, they persist. And trying to pull the rug out from under the sky, who was a purple heart and all that. Oh, all the medals you can see medals, on his chest as they, he goes and in. The audacity to try to attack How him. How dare they? Because he is an immigrant. He came yeah. when he was, what, two years old? All immigrants are bad, you know? Two years old, he came with his family. Three. Um, was he three? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, and in that three years, he somehow developed the body of the loyalty when he was... Ooh. Right, just because yeah. he's from Ukraine. Yeah. Right. It, well, hmm? go, ahead. go ahead. No, no. What well, does it surprise anyone if you you had John McCain thrown under the bus? Because right. I don't like people that get captured. Does it does it surprise anyone when the cons were being you know assaulted and their uh, you know uh, their you know their son was killed in, in action? Yeah. I mean, wow. so why should we be surprised now that um, Donald Trump and his acolytes have taken issue with this particular witness? It's yeah. all of the Republicans that are jumping on that bandwagon that just make me so angry. Yeah, Not lot. all, but a lot. a lot, yes. Too many, too many. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, how, how, how is the case going, you know? Um, the Republicans have decided they were going to attack the process, right? Um, and they've been <laughs> mercilessly attacking the process without ever getting to the content. Right. But the content, when you shake it and bake it, looks pretty good for impeachment. Absolutely. Impeachment oh, yes. looks better all the time. Yes, That's why we're calling this show <laughs> the Noose Titan. How good is it? Well, if you can't attack the law, the law's not going to work for you, then you do attack the process. Right now, they're putting you know, the process together, so they won't be able to attack the process much longer. So then what do you do? If you can't attack the law, you can't attack the process, you attack the witnesses. And well, sooner or later, that's not going to work, so then what do you do? You just throw up your hands and wiggle them around as fast <laughs> as you can, because that's all they got left. That's all they got left, that's well, right. Let's, let's talk about the content for a moment. You know, putting aside these arguments, this only argument about the process. Uh, we'll get to it. But what about what we know in terms of the substantive evidence? How does it look? How, who's saying what and how credible are they? Hmm? Well, it looks like they've all sort of corroborated the whistleblower, right? And that's the thing, too, the whistleblower being attacked the way he is. And even just with the Vindman, um deposition, all of the Republicans, reportedly anyway, all they cared about doing was trying to get the name of the whistleblower. They didn't ask him quest substantive questions. All they did was try to get the name of the whistleblower so that they can discredit the whistleblower and that they can out him, which makes him out of it or her, whoever it is, um, at very great risk to their own life, their own Futures, everything. Yeah. The what way about, what about the Trump. witnesses so far that we know of? I mean, putting all this process aside for just a moment, because I think it's phony, the process issues. Oh, yeah, they um, are. <clears throat> what do we got in terms well, of evidence? Lieutenant Colonel Alexander Vindman is a crucial witness because you remember when the whistleblower first came out, the first thing was that Donald Trump said is, well, he has secondhand knowledge. Right. That's the first thing. Well, in this case, Vindman is firsthand knowledge. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's critical. Uh, number two is, he's also pointing out that the transcript that was uh, issued by the White House isn't necessarily the actual reality of what was said on that phone call. And he's, he's made some points about the ellipsis and the fact that um, there would have been a little bit more there that's not in the transcript. So where is the real, real transcript? Where is the real transcript? Well, Remember, the, the, oh. even the summary transcript went down into a vault on a very irregular basis. I mean, is that the missing right. tape? The Nixon missing it, tape? It, it, it is, it's 18 I think. 18 minutes and all that. That's the thing about it is that we've only got about six minutes worth of, of actual dialogue when in reality the whole thing lasted, what was it, 18 uh, I, minutes? We should, we should so, have been asking at the outset, insisting at the outset, 
where is the tape? Where is the full transcript? Pull it out of and that you know, server. The funny thing is when you put these ellipses in, they didn't say anything what the ellipses meant. Right. They didn't say, Correct. you know, it's just maybe, maybe you could have assumed that uh, it, was, it was inaudible or there was a, a gap in the speaking, uh, but you would not assume that they removed things from, and, and that it was at the end only a summary with, with the substance removed. It doesn't matter how important that was or how it fits, you know, in the larger context. But what matters is they changed it. Mm -hmm. They had a better one, and they <coughs> gave us a worse one, and we still don't have the better one. Well, and you have direct oppositional testimony between Vinland and Sondland. Sondland said there was no mention of this on the phone call. Okay, so now we have, direct, we have a direct conflict. It'll be interesting to see if Sondland is brought back in to clarify and or see if he you know, created perjury of any type. Yeah. He is coming back in. Well, there you go. He'll have so his he, chance. He is because he's saying that he has to correct some of his testimony. I'm sure that his lawyers are saying, listen, you got five other people coming in that directly go against what you've said, so you need to switch uh, yeah, it up and you need to come back. Right in. after the Times reported that the right. uh, House was considering perjury charges right. against him. So and now he's going back into changing. Deflecting the perjury charges. Right. Yeah. Okay, that'll be really important to have that, that uh, testimony corrected. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because after that, I think it's his time to go. Yeah. I mean, how, how, again, I said last week and the week before, how far down the rabbit hole do you need to go? Well, you the have, other, your, the you other have your pertinent interesting facts. interesting thing about Vinman is that Vinman is active duty military, and he was there in the Security Council and all that, the National Security Council, mm -hmm. um, and uh, undoubtedly instructed not to testify. Okay? Right. And in he walks. Um, you know, uh, regardless of any instructions from Trump. Now, and that's a message to all the others who have similar instructions right. who refuse to walk, including that guy Kupperman, mm -hmm. uh, who filed a lawsuit the day before, Friday, before right, the, the Monday, right. uh, asking a judge uh, for some kind of uh, uh, determination as to whether he was obligated to testify. And of course, that sort of throws it into court, kicks it into court. Who knows when we're going to get an answer on that? Sooner the better. And the sooner, actually, I think, is that he's not, he's not in any privilege. He should be uh, ordered to testify. He shouldn't right. testify. Um, but uh, what this tells us with Vinman is that, yes, you can go down there and testify. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm sure the administration's going, uh-oh, our, our wall is cracking. Yes. You know, our, our phalon is, is breaking apart. Yeah. Well, what is it? Right. Mm -hmm. The noose tightens. And it does. Well, they're bringing up now stuff about the Mueller report also. And I don't see why not. And if you look at it, he's going about the same kind of obstruction in this case that he did in the Mueller case. And so I hope they don't leave that out. And I hope that they make it at least one of the articles of impeachment. Yeah. Um, because they're worried, they're going back and forth talking about how we want to keep it simple, we want to just keep it in Ukraine. People can't understand the Mueller stuff, and I think they could if they read it. But um, I hope they'll bring it in and they won't leave it out. I think but, one thing is worth noting is that back in the, in the I guess it was the, the 50s with, with McCarthy, um, McCarthy, the McCarthy hearings about how many communists in the State Department, how many communists in the Department of the Army and all this, he was chasing communists, obviously, trying to make a name for himself. Right. And, um, and uh, ultimately, uh, and he was at war, if you will, with the State Department and at war with the Army. Does that sound familiar mm -hmm. right now? Um, and finally, you know, and he had the help of Roy Cohn, who was his advisor, his lawyer, I guess. And uh, Cohn was, by the way, uh, very friendly with, um, with uh, Donald Trump back in the day. Funny thing. Before Cohn died. Uh, but what I want to just mention is that McCarthy went down. Um, he was disgraced. He, he was disgraced. He was rejected by both parties on both sides. Communists and not communists. Everybody, you know, he was debunked and finished. And he goes down in the history books as a, as, well, a, as, a, as a real jerk. And hopefully Barr uh, Every high down. school talked about McCarthyism. Yeah, they did. I don't know a history book in the United States Back in the 60s and 70s, they didn't talk about McCarthyism, yeah. a lesson to be learned. Yeah. Apparently, right. he hadn't been printing that in the 80s and 90s. <laughs> well, but history right. repeats itself. Yes, it does. Only worse. Much well, worse this Yogi time. Berra's deja vu all over again. Right. That's what it is. <laughs> yeah. so say, that's well, you know, point. I just want to say one thing. It's, it's, it's interesting because uh, Donald Trump did 
take to Twitter about Vindman, Colonel Vindman. And uh, this one is a particular funny quote because it might be true. Um, he said, was this the same call that I was? Can't be possible. Please ask him to read the transcript of the call. Witch hunt. Well, maybe it was a different phone call. Maybe it's the real one, and Donald Trump is just going off the transcript that has been contrived. Right. <laughs> right. I think you're probably right. That's Because right. he believes his own lies. He, well, he buys has to. into all of his own lies. Yeah. He has to. Right, which is so, why he's That's why he's so good at it. Yeah. Right, it's why he's compelling. That's why people get sucked in, is because he's very good at lying. Okay, so he believes one them. of the things that the press was saying right after this kind of thing was coming up, these witnesses were coming up, and it was clear that uh, Trump had a quid pro quo, um, and Trump was, uh, was trying to, uh, you know, get this head of state to uh, help him out in return for the release of funds that Congress had already appropriated, which were critical to Ukraine. Um, so the, the press said many times, we haven't seen um, a, a, a strategy from the White House. The White House doesn't seem to have any strategy. And indeed, Trump was off on this tangent, or off on that tangent, and he was scattered all over the place. Okay, so now it's, what, two weeks later. Do we see a strategy? What is the strategy? And is the strategy effective? And do the people in the, you know, the, the red states, the base, do they, you think they accept the strategy? Mm -hmm. What is the strategy, Tim? <laughs> It's the strategy, strategy of lying and going, uh oh, that wasn't good enough. I now need to go back and fix it. Um, yeah, well, another, quote, another, line. another quote about Vindman. Trump said, I never heard of him. Well, he, don't you think before he made definitive statements about the transcript that he would have figured out who else was on the phone call? I mean, wouldn't anyone just say, well, gosh darn it, who else was on the call? Well, apparently he doesn't do that. So now that, you know, uh, Vindman is. Telling it like it is on uh, what transpired on the phone call, Trump's now going back, going, oh, I never heard of him. Okay. <laughs> He's a never Trumper. Right. You know, so it's, there is no strategy. Well, I actually think there is. And I think it's a manipulative, set people up <clears throat> kind of strategy. So it seems like it's chaos and he doesn't really have any kind of plan, but you see so much projection. He's always accusing other people of the things that he is doing. Trump so you can really kind of gauge what he's doing by what he's accusing other people of. And so in that sense, in the same sense that a narcissist will set up his you know, significant other to be controlled, that's kind of, I, I see very many similarities between the way my first husband was and, <laughs> and the way Trump is. I'm serious. We're not that abusive. Do a on no, that. no, but I'm talking about the abusive, narcissistic, control freak is it kind of way of thinking. Yes, is I think it is. Is it working in the South? Is it I working with yes, the base? It is. is it working in the red states? Of course it's it working. is. I was down there, and absolutely it's working. Yes, it's working. Working yeah. well. Watch Fox News for a few minutes so and you'll see this. how is this going to affect his electability? If we stop right now, how does it affect his electability? Well, I don't think that matters because he's going to cheat. And that's what I always say. It doesn't matter how many people vote for him or don't vote for him because he's going to cheat. Is he and tarnished? He will... Is he blemished? And... He was tarnished oh, the day he came down the escalator Yeah, three years he ago. was. Already okay, tarnished. All right, let's talk about There's Nancy. an accepted amount of tarnish. Let's, let's talk about Nancy. I mean, yeah. He really had been able to... Um, hold on to the Republicans in, in Congress, although right. they're, certainly they're cracks uh, with, with uh, for example, Cheney. Uh, that, was, that was certainly a, a right. debauchery. Um, but what about, you know, uh, um, what about the Nancy Pelosi's move on establishing this resolution that will be voted on tomorrow, Thursday? Um, how good is that? How smart is that? Um, how, how, how does that address the problems the defense, if you will, that Trump and his friends have raised, will it work? Yeah. Well, you remove the check mark. Right. You remove their basis of protest. And maybe it's something that she didn't have to do by statute, but she, she's doing it. And then you're going to follow down the cookbook recipe for what's involved with the steps of impeachment. And this one didn't have to happen, but it's going to happen. Well, I think she's smart to do it. Um, because they've got a little bit of a base of information, right, already under wraps, basically, that can now be released to the public throughout this, through this resolution. And it also sets some rules, and it keeps it in the House. And I think that's really important, because, you know, the minute it gets to the Senate, it's going to die, you know, in 
Mitch McConnell, or I should say Moscow Mitch's you know, great wasteland of bills. And that's what will happen with this also. So they need to get as much information out to the public as they possibly can before it goes up Well, to what's the interesting Senate. is they don't have to do this, as Tim said. They don't no, have to do this. They don't this. have to. This is way beyond. It hasn't happened before. Um, the fact is they could have the whole thing in secret if they right. want. Uh, and then, you know, present it later. Um, but they have been attacked for a secret proceeding, and those uh, 24 Republicans uh, showed up, some of whom were actually on the committee. On the yeah, committee. it could have been inside, very I know. deceptive maneuver. It's ridiculous. <clears throat> so she, she says, well, okay, what's good enough for the goose? You want, you want openness? I'm not obligated to give you openness. The Congress doesn't have any duty to give you openness. It's not provided in the law or in the, in the precedent. But we're going to give you openness. Bon appetit. Bon appetit. You know, you, you can have what you wanted and see if you like it that way. All right. Well, so I had lunch with a good friend of mine yesterday and I told him I thought it was really smart for her to do this because it, it's, you know, what's good enough for the goose and the gander and all that. And right. this is the way you respond to these incessant attacks of, of secrecy. And he said, don't be so optimistic about this, Jay. This was lunch yesterday, 24 <coughs> hours ago. Uh, he said, what's going to happen is the Republicans are going to attack the resolution. They're going to say the resolution is unfair. It's faulty. Yeah. Even though the resolution answers and gives them what they were asking for right. before. And damn, he was right, wasn't he? Know, as, soon as, as soon as it hit the deck, um, they were attacking the resolution. Well, the rules within the resolution is the thing, because they want to be able to question the um, witnesses themselves, well, but one of the rules now has been put in there that they will be questioned by staffers, so that instead of a you know a congressman sitting there for five minutes giving you a bunch of um, smoke and nonsense, and then finally ask a question, they won't be able to do that. Ninety minutes. Yeah, there will be some kind of continuity to the questioning that goes well, on, on. On its face, it's fair. Oh, what, way what more fair. What the Republicans have been saying for the past twenty-four right? hours is. It's not enough. It's not soon no. enough. It's not enough. And, and you should have given us this kind of transparency from day one. You no get, obligation to do that. Right. You get to the counterpoint. You stick to your points. It's not been done before. We're doing something that you've asked for. So be happy. No, they're not happy. happy. Well, no, but yeah, stop you've it. got to stay to your, your talking points. Right. Yeah. Moving out to the larger context yeah. on this, though. Um, as Cynthia said, it's not likely that the Senate, the Senate will have a trial. Yes, but it will it'll be, be a it'll, mock it'll trial. It'll be a mock trial. It'll be right. phony. Um, and they won't, they won't convict. And we'll have to try to figure out as we go forward on Trump week what that all means to the electorate and the country and the right. way the country looks. You know, the optics of it and the ultimate effect of it. But um, what's interesting about Nancy's maneuver, if you think about this, she's opening it up just the way they want um, for a public spectacular. We are mm -hmm. now going to have a trial. The Constitution says the trial is in the Senate. Right. Nancy is shifting it to yep. the House. Yep. We're going to have a spectacular trial. There's going to be 80 million people watching every yep. day, maybe yep. 100 million people. Yep. And we're going to see this whole thing play out. And if he is convicted, which I think he will be yes. in the House, that's going to lay a big, a big shadow on the Senate. So the House convicts, essentially. I mean, it's... Right. You know, by, by virtue of this procedure with the, the witnesses and the cross-examination, right. Trump will not testify. I yeah. know he, he will have the opportunity. Right. He won't testify. Now we get to the Senate, and for reasons they cannot articulate, they acquit him. Right. Well, wait a minute. Didn't the, the House just have a trial and convict him? You know, most people don't know the distinction right. between the impeachment inquiry in, in the House and the, impeachment and the, and the trial. trial in right. the Senate. And they're going to say, how come it is... Right? That the Senate doesn't agree with the House after the House had this big deal. Well, trial. it's all about putting somebody on record. Right. That's why I think they're actually going to have the formality of a vote right. on the process. Because after this, after the vote, it goes to the committee, right. the Judicial Committee. <clears throat> then they take their votes. And if it's affirmative, then from there, it goes to the floor of the House. Right. But let's get, you know, Nancy's no slouch. Let's get the Republicans in the House of Representatives on record with their vote. Yes. Because that'll tie right into the vote record of the Senate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they should be worried. The Republicans it's should be worried. It's all about painting people. They should be very right. worried. It's worried about what the country feels, including the base, right. how they perceive all of this. And, and when all the evidence comes out and 
You know, they have these open hearings, transparency, cross-examination, what have you, argument, debate, remember? Right. That's part of the resolution. Oh, boy. So, but I want to talk about another aspect of Trump's defense, if you will. First thing he does is over the weekend, he makes an announcement that there's something big going to happen 24 hours from now. I think he announced it on, yeah. on Sunday morning, was it? Or, yeah. yeah, Sunday morning. Whole country is on tenterhooks, and they killed Baghdadi, al Baghdadi. Oh, right. Okay, all right, okay. But can we analyze that for a minute? Because that, <laughs> that arguably helps him. It shows you, that, yes, he's doing business here. He's doing what presidents should do. But I think, you know, I think it's clear that it's part of his defense. It just happened to happen now. Right, and um, so he's using it. But there's a lot of things that are phony baloney about yes. what he did and how he Obviously. presented it. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. Well, you, you just said it yourself. You, you, this should have helped him immensely. But by the time he put all his spin and baloney and, you know, bra braggadocious, you know, statements, right. you're going, this, this, I don't even know if it's true or not, because now he's put so many lies into this and hyperbole into the story. Um, right. It is true. But did he have to do that? Of course not. But is that Donald Trump? Of course it is. Yeah. If he had just been factual and just stated the facts and got off the, off the podium, this would have led to a very, very popular away for him. But he, it didn't. And he, he lied. It up, didn't he? He, he lied it up. saying it was all Americans that did it. And it wasn't. Awesome. Actually, the inside man was through the Kurds. And so he barely gave the Kurds credit. And the first time he didn't, he got some backlash about it. So he came back out and said something about them. But it was all about, you know, look what I did. I did this. He didn't do it. He didn't really have anything to do with it, no, it except to say, in, okay, go ahead and do it. It is already in place. It is already in place. It was the army. In you know, fact, the, if anything, he messed it up. It. He messed it yes, up. Yes, if anything. He messed he it up by getting out of Syria that quick. Yes. And threw the whole thing, spin, you know, spun about. It became much more dangerous. Right. It became more way dangerous. more dangerous for everybody involved. Yeah. And, yeah. So I'd like to add one other thing. Is I th the Kurds, you know, have been our friends. Yes. Um, the information and the assistance we got from the Kurds right. in the killing of al Baghdadi was mm -hmm. after Trump had turned his back on them. Right. And they still do. So, and they still you know, do. you really have a mixed bag there. One is, uh, are they so much our friends that even after we dump on them, turn our backs on them, they're still willing to help? Because they were there. They were there. Right. Is that something or what? Is right? that something I don't I think it's that the, they're the friends. I think they just were committed, and the so they followed oh, through no. when we didn't. They the love America. Those Kurds love America and what America stood for and stands for. They do. Still? I yes. mean, I've seen pictures of them getting, you know, having rotten fruit thrown out of well, them. Yeah, going but along you have to understand to the, the, the context behind that. Right. Last week, I talked about, you know, back in 1992, sitting down with Kurds. Right. And some of the PPK and during dinner and, and UT. They love this country. Right. And they love for everything it stands for, freedom and, you know, the, and they throwing, love the American and not electing troops. dictators. There's a president. lot of Christians involved in that culture, too. It's not just, you know, Muslims it, there's a, or Islam. There's a lot of, there's a lot of Christians. In, you talk about in loyalty. So one yeah. possibility, one fork of this dilemma is that even after he turned his back on them, they still helped us. Yeah. Right. Which means, you know, they, they don't take him seriously. I mean, it's a, it's a very serious matter, but they don't take them seriously. And, they, and their love for the country, their uh, alignment with the U.S. is strong, so strong that they know he's a short-termer. The other possibility, and maybe both possibilities took place, is that Trump paid him off. Because yeah. that's what he does. Yeah, that's so, what I you, know, you guys, we need your help. How about a million dollars to each of you? Uh, I, I'm, I'm making this up, but it just strikes me as a logical possibility to get them back in because he knew how important it was to go on this mission. And he knew how dangerous it was and how much we needed them, uh, especially because he'd, he'd blown the timeline by uh, his maneuver the week before. So, I mean, that's, that's one major thing um, that, he, that it, he made it harder for us. And of course, as you mentioned, uh, using words like, uh, what did he say? He was, uh, he was afraid, he was... Whimpering, whimpering, whimpering crying, screaming, crying, crying the whole time. Yeah, no, I don't believe that. We got like, like a dog, died like a dog. Something like that. And when the Department of Defense said we have no information about that, what they were really saying to all the world is that Trump made it up. Yeah. Made What's it he up. talking about? Yeah. yeah. First off, these guys are trained to blow themselves up. 
Yeah. There's not a lot of whimpering, sniveling, whining going on. They, they know what button and what cord to pull to right. blow themselves up. That's right. all there is to it. I still yeah. wonder if he did. I mean, they said they found well, <coughs> DNA. That's only because so. you don't believe anything Trump says. That's right. So, yeah. Okay, what else we got here in the waning moments? Katie Hill going down, a uh, representative from California, has been accused. Well, first, her ex husband leaked some uh, pornographic photos of her, and so they let, let them out to the public. And then if they found out that she was having an, an affair or a relationship with one of her staffers, so she was told she needed to step down. The interesting part about all this just came out today. George Papadopoulos is, is, um, going, is campaigning for her seat. Well, he said that this seat was going to be open days before the pornographic photos came out before the information about the staffer came out, before any of the information about her leaving or have needing to leave came out, George Papadopoulos is tweeting about so it. So what does this suggest? And now he's, well, it suggests that somehow there was some sort of something behind all of it and somebody knew about it. And he's a Republican. Hmm. So, and he's got a big mouth. Was so she, I think she, he knew and he tweeted when he shouldn't have. Was she, was she attacking Trump? Oh, yes. She's very much against it. So this it. is Trump's many ways of trying at, at hurting to get, get rid of anybody that he can in the Democrats in so the Republicans can Even take back the pornographic House. pornographic pictures. Even pornographic pictures. Yes, absolutely. How and that's what it says we to me. Have gone, how low we are slung now. Not and yes, there's still him. a possibility that he will win this election. There's still a possibility. Yes. Well, there's a great possibility. Because yeah. he'll cheat. So what is, what is his... Yeah, okay, that's a statement that answers the question I was going to ask. What's he going to do now? He's got more witnesses coming. Nancy is inexorable. Um, she, she and uh, what's his name? Uh, Schiff. Schiff. They're going to do a, a real yeoman's job on conducting the rest right. of this, this investigation. Um, they might even do it in a timely way, you know, to beat the holidays. Um, and, and we're going to have a, a real, we're going to have a real shindig here mm -hmm. against Trump. What is Trump going to do? Remember the 25th Amendment and remember the fact that he's a narcissist and remember the fact that, you know, he's, he's got very strange psychiatric problems. Um, what is he going to do now? Well, what can we expect next week? You can expect Donald Trump going in for medical care because he's going to have um, a lot of blisters on his thumbs for <laughs> tweeting all, all his rage as this stuff comes more out. And he'll be on, he'll be on a little Twitty, Twitter factory. I think he's going to be more dangerous because always when you get a narcissist back in the corner like that, they become more dangerous. So every day that, that the, everything mounts and the news tightens, every day that that news tightens, he becomes more dangerous. He, he may say something he'll regret because he doesn't have his attorneys with him all the time. Right. And, you know, the attorneys have very little influence over what he says and what he tweets. Yeah. So... That's a good point, that when he gets back to the corner, he starts saying all sorts of outrageous things. And right. some of them, some of them have a kernel of truth to it. Yeah. And you don't know what those kernels are until he utters them out. But right. yeah. um, look for something that he said that he didn't mean to say. Yeah. Well, I think uh, going forward, we can expect more of the, of the same. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think we should never forget that he's got one hand over here trying to set the agenda in the press and among the people. Trying to be, you know, the first 20, 30 articles in every newspaper in the country, the world. Uh, trying to be on the news for, you know, six, eight, ten hours a night. Um, he's, he's, uh, he's our entertainment already. It's not just me at home watching all the news. I think all of America is at home watching all of the news. He's, right. you know, commanding the agenda. In a funny way, that's an important part about what Nancy did. She is now in charge of at least part of the agenda. Right. But what I want to say, and I think we should continue to watch, is while all this goes on, all these shenanigans and the lying and the deception and the bizarre conduct and the outrageous moves uh, and the attacks on government itself, on the State Department, on the Army, on uh, mm -hmm. everybody else, um, he's got the other hand behind his back that he right. doesn't tell us about. Right. And the press has to work very hard to find out about. Uh, and he's dismantling so much of the apparatus uh, that has existed to protect us, protect right. the country, do the right thing. Right. That is still happening. And I think we always have to watch that with him. Right.
and it's going to be very hard to correct it later. In uh, the 60 Minutes interview uh, Biden made, yeah, right. he said something really profound, and we should leave it here. He said, he said if Trump is, is, uh, is thrown out of office now or at the election in 2020, there'll be a tremendous amount of damage that we have to fix. Right. Um, but we can fix it. Uh, if he succeeds to another term, uh, very questionable uh, whether we can fix it. Right. He will have, for all practical purposes, changed the country in a bad way forever. Right. And we won't have an easy opportunity to fix it. And I think you have to agree with that. I do that agree. That was very wise, regardless of his position as a candidate. Mm -hmm. True. Thank I agree. You, Tim. Thank yeah. you, Jim. Thank you, Cynthia. Thank you. It's next nice week, to be right? back. Very Happy to be back with you guys. These discussions. Yeah. All right. We'll see you next week. week. Yeah, read the paper. <laughs> <laughs>